You know, we argue in favor of um, uh, an agreement, a quick agreement, upon the um, EU-Turkey uh, action plan, and we argue in favor of the uh, quick implementation of that agreement. Um, it should consist of three issues for sure. One should be, first should be uh, the um, acceleration of negotiations between uh, EU and Turkey. Uh, our um, position is that European Union uh, uh, should enlarge, uh, because if uh, EU is uh, too much introverted into our own problems, then we will be even weaker uh, in the future. So uh, our position is that enlargement is necessary, and, and uh, we should um, have a much tighter cooperation with Turkey. Second one, that uh, we should accelerate the visa liberalization uh, process. You know, um, uh, current President Erdogan, at that time uh, Prime Minister, made the decision uh, to um, abolish uh, the, um, the visa obligatory regime to Hungary and to uh, give a visa-free regime. Of course, we, uh, we take advantage of that. Many Hungarian tourists are coming to Turkey without uh, any obligations to have a visa. Uh, we would like to have it on a mutual basis. We have already um, uh, made decisions which are allowed inside the Schengen framework, how to ease this uh, visa facilitation issue uh, between Turkey and Hungary. But our aim is to accelerate the visa liberalization uh, process and uh, have the visa-free regime as soon as possible. And the third, that uh, uh, we should uh, grant uh, finances to Turkey in order to, um, to share the burden of, um, of the uh, operations and maintenance of, um, of refugee camps in Turkey. You know, from European perspective, it's not a refugee issue. This is a mass migration. According to our experience, um, the vast majority of the 400,000 irregular migrants who entered Hungarian territory were economic migrants and not asylum seekers. Uh, these people all want to go to Austria or to Germany, uh, but uh, of course their motivation is not running for their lives because no one has to escape from Hungary, no one has to escape from Austria, no one has to escape from Croatia, no one has to escape from Serbia. So they have another type of motivation. And this motivation is an economic uh, motivation. Because when they come from Syria to Turkey, they are refugees. But Turkey is a safe country. Turkey takes care of these uh, refugees in a proper and very fair and correct way. That's why we propose to the European Union to, uh, to um, give financial support uh, to Turkey, uh, to be able to bear this burden, because it's not fair that Turkey is wearing the vast majority of the burden. You know? uh, I think that, uh, that, that the fair approach should be that the European Union would uh, uh, take over the finances of the refugee camps here. And if, uh, if, uh, if new uh, refugee camps uh, should be built, then we should take over, take over the finances as well. So, um, why you know there are European regulations, common European regulations, saying that the Schengen border, the zone of the Schengen border, must be uh, protected by the um, by the member state which is located on the external Schengen border, and uh, we have to comply with that regulation. The regulation says that we have to ensure that uh, crossing that border is only possible through border crossing points during opening hours, and in order to comply with this regulation. We have to uh, build a physical obstacle because without that you cannot take control over 520 kilometers of land border without major um, uh, natural uh, obstacles. So that was the reason. But you know, it's, it's a typical example of European double standards that on one hand we are forced to comply with that regulation, on the other hand we are criticized because of the method. But when we ask what other kinds of methods uh, could be applied, then the answer is that they don't know. No, because um, the uh, European regulation says that uh, each member state uh, have to defend the outside, uh, the, uh, the external border of uh, EU and especially the external border of the Schengen zone. And uh, in order to comply with that, there's no other method. And you know, this is not, this is not the only fence in Europe. Uh, for example, um, the Greek, um, uh, Greek-Turkish border, there's a fence be, uh, have been built by the Greeks. There's a, there's a, a fence under construction uh, on the border between Bulgaria and Turkey. There's a huge fence in Calais in order to, uh, to prevent migrants to jump on the trucks that are heading towards uh, Great Britain, or Spain is, is uh, uh, protecting uh, uh, her cities uh, with huge uh, uh, you know, uh, walls. So uh, this is not a unique uh, solution uh, in this respect. And if you have such kind of a pressure, then, then, you have to, uh, then you have to stop it somehow, because it is not normal that you know, people, thousands, 5,000, 
10,000 coming on a daily basis through your country, through your, through your border, uh, rejecting any kind of cooperation with the local authorities, just crossing the border as they want. This is not the normal way of life. And from Serbia or from Croatia, no one has to escape. So the, the lives of these people are not in danger in Serbia or in, or in Croatia. So there's no reason that they have to be let in through, um, through a green border. I mean, if you travel to Hungary, for example, by plane, you have to queue a line, right? Uh, you have to show your travel documents, you have to wait until you get on the plane, you get out, or if you come by car, you have to wait on the border crossing points. This is normal way. And it's not normal that those people who don't have travel documentation just go through green border without any kind of uh, uh, preconditions. Actually, uh, this year we had 390,000 people, uh, irregular migrants, arriving into Hungary. And the uh, vast majority of them, almost all of them, uh, just passed through the country and they left for Austria and then from Germany, of course. Now the uh, fear is that uh, after their uh, request for asylum uh, will be um, refused, rejected, then they would be sent back to Hungary because uh, we have registered them and we understand that EU member states, uh, they have entered prior to Hungary, have not registered them. The microphone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.